put those hands together for the Almighty God. Hallelujah. I also want to appreciate my father in the faith, our dear Chancellor, Dr. David Oyedepo, for the grace of God that is upon his life. And I pray that that grace will be on the increase in the name of Jesus Christ. It is on this instruction I'm standing before us this morning, under God, bringing the word of life to us. It is my prayer that the world will meet each one at the point of his or her needs. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Deputy Vice Chancellor with us this morning, the acting Registrar, all other members of management here present, we appreciate every one of us. The chaplain and all the other members of chaplaincy, we appreciate every one of us. Faculty and staff, kings and queen in Hebron, we give God praise for his mighty hand that has brought us to the last Tuesday chapel service in this session. And listen to this, it is going to be the last chapel service for someone before the person will collect his or her BA or BSc or BHeng degree. If you are there, put those hands together for the almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The journey of four years, the journey of five years is not a joke. God has brought you thus far. He deserves all our thanksgiving. And that is the reason that our teaching focus for this month, since this month began for our chapel services, had been understanding the power of thanksgiving. Understanding the power of thanksgiving. Because if we do not have understanding, there is no way we can be outstanding. We will not be able to give thanks well if you don't know the reason why we need to give thanks. The Bible enjoins us to do everything with understanding, including giving him thanks. The father of our dear chancellor in his lifetime said, if you do not know how to thank, you have committed a great crime. And is a if you do not know how to give thanks, you have committed a great crime. Most of the time, we are bothered by what is yet to happen. We lose sight of what has already happened. And most of the time, what has happened is greater than what is coming to happen or what is going to happen. But we are not going to be like them. We are going to be like that one leper who will be able to appreciate what God has done much more than what it is that we are expecting. Because we know that for as long as we thank him for his hand, we are bound to see his outstretched hand. And that is going to be the testimony of every one of us today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, the Bible says, Give in everything. Give thanks. In everything minus nothing. Give thanks. Give thanks in everything. And it is in giving thanks that we are qualified to see his promise coming to fulfillment in our lives. One thing I've discovered is this. There is practically nothing any man can do for himself except that which the Lord has ordained for him or her. Except that which the Lord has ordained for him or her. I look back and I saw some of my classmates when we were in primary school and secondary school. I saw a particular guy. He was the most brilliant in our primary school. We went to the same secondary school also. We got to the, same, to the secondary school. He was also among the most brilliant. But we left secondary school and life changed. To gain admission to the university, talk of war. Until we speak, he could not step into the university. Yet, he was among, he was, in primary school, he was the most brilliant. In secondary school, he was one of the best. Yet, he couldn't get it. Some of us were not as brilliant as, as he was that time. Yet, grace located us. So, most of the time, the things that we, that we cry about, they don't count. If we understand what God does for us part time, there is no man we will have to ask him for anything. Because the one that he has done, we have, not even paid the, we have not even paid the price of the debt we are owing him. Every one of us, we are debtors under God. We owe him thanks. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, the word of the Lord says, He said, We are bound to give thanks always 
all of the time, all of the time, every single moment of our lives, we are bound to give thanks to God. We are bound to give thanks to God. Think of it. The road that you ply and you return and you are complaining about traffic was the same road somebody else, is, somebody else plied and did not return. And the one who did not return can never complain about traffic hold up. Never. Dead men don't ride horses. The food that you had and you complained that, that this meat is even too small, that's the same thing somebody has had and the food went somewhere else and that was the last meat he ever had. That was the last meat he ever had. That was the last meat he ever had. The car that you are complaining about, I know someone who had worked with Lagos State Government for many years. All through the years he worked with Lagos State Government, he never bought a bicycle. So in Nanga, he resigned and went into private practice. About three or six months down into a private practice, God bless him, he bought his first car. And everybody was like, wow, if you had known, you could have left all this wise. See how wonderful God was. But three months after that, there was demonstration in town. And he just left, just to, from his house, he had not driven out 10 minutes. He got to a place, he said, he saw the miscreant, he wanted to dodge and he entered into a ditch. That was his last. He himself was a write-off, the car was a write-off. So the car that he was, he was pursuing all the time he was in service was inside the same car that was his last. We owe God thanks. Let somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you think back into your life, you will know there are so many occasions that if not for God, you will not be here. I had many in my life. Now, if not for God, I would not be here. I was traveling for my engagement, and I was to enter a particular vehicle, and then as I was to enter, somebody just came and said, no, 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 no. I'm the one. I said, I got here before you, and the, the Aguero's at the place said, oh, God, wait now. It is he's one of us. He's the one that will go with that vehicle. So I went back, entered the next vehicle, and I had to wait for the vehicle to be filled. And then we were going, Less than the journey was just 30 minutes. Less than 15 minutes, we met a carnage on the, on the way. The vehicle that just left and another truck had on collision. I could have entered it. Maybe the case could have ended. So, if you think back, you will discover that in your life, you have many occasions that, except God stepped in, we wouldn't have met. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. But what is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is appreciating God for the present in anticipation of the future. It is appreciating God for what he has done as a guarantee for what God is about to do. Appreciating him for what he has done as a guarantee for what he is about to do. One thing that I have known is that God is not a man that he should lie. He does not forget anything that he has promised you. He promised Father Abraham, I'm going to make you great. I'm going to bless you and you are going to be a blessing. I'm going, you are going to become father of nations, but it took 25 years. And Father Abraham stood on that promise. Why do we shake? Man may forget one thing I've known is that God does not forget he said, a woman cannot forget the baby that came, from her, that came from her. And he said, it is even possible for the mother to forget. He said, but me, I will never forget or forsake you. You know why it is possible for the mother to forget? The mother did not create the child, but God created you. So the mother that born may forget, but God that created can never forget. Because we are here in, as a replica of God on the face of the earth. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. What are we thanking God for? We are thanking God for his wondrous works. Because all of the works of God, they are wonderful. There is nothing that God does that you can say is not great. 
great men don't do small things. So the great God cannot do small things. And let's look at it. That you slept last night and you woke up this morning, we don't know how great it is because it looks like it's automatic to us. One time I was on an assignment right here in Canaan land and I had a fall. And when I had the fall, I landed on my hand, this right hand. And so this right hand had to be suspended in POP for six weeks. The first day I got home, I tried to use the left hand to eat. That was the day I knew that um, khaki is not leather. You know, they say khaki no be leather. And the khaki I knew was not leather. I tried to use the left hand to sign. I knew khaki was not leather. For six weeks, the POP was in my hand. Now, that was the day I knew that, you know, to just, hang, to just let your hand hang. You don't know what God is doing. When anything happens to that hand, you will know what pain is. That time, I will be on this altar ministering. So, they gave me an uh, handless microphone to use that could fix. And then, now this hand was always like this. And I will be on the altar. People will not know, but I will be going through excruciating pain. So because you are now swinging your hand, you think God has not done anything great. Because you carry your leg and it is carryable, you think God has not done something great. You open your eyes and the leaves respond. You think God has not done something great. You eat and you can even know this food has too much salt. It is because you have taste. When the test ball refuses to work, you will know what it means to be able to identify that there is salt in the food. Glory be to God. Glory. So we thank him for his wondrous works. In Psalm 78, verse 40, he said, How of the day provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Verse 41, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Most of the time, our thankless life is a limitation on the hand of God. When we do not know how to thank him, we have limited him from doing what he has in mind to do for us. We have limited him from doing what he has in mind to, to do for us. If you stay around the chancellor, you cannot escape it. You will hear, he, 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 he does not even, he may not even know that somebody is beside him any longer. You'll be hearing it from him. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you. You will hear him from him all of the time. All of the time. There is no news you bring to him that does not end in thank you, Jesus. If you tell him the whole state, nobody is there any longer, you will hear from his mouth, Father, we give you praise. After all, we have 36 states. So if one is not there, we see have 35 left. Who is keeping the 35? He has always found reason to give God thanks. Let that become our lifestyle and we'll be able to see God in a new dimension in our lives. I trust that will be our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That will be our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In verse 42 of that scripture, he said, they remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the head. That is talking about the children of Israel. I have never seen a recalcitrant people like them, as Bible recorded it. Nobody had ever seen the wonders of God like the nation called Israel. Yet, nobody had ever seen against God like, this, like that same nation. They went into captivity how many times? Simply because they will not acknowledge the hand of God. If you look at Covenant University and we see what is working, it is because God is making it to work. We are not the only university in town. We have resources. We are not the only one with resources. We have ideas. We are not the only one with ideas. The same ideas that are working here, they have tried it elsewhere. It did not work. I can count how many universities that come here, their management that come here to be trained. We gave them the principles. We gave them the philosophies. We gave them the scriptures. They went back. It did not work. They couldn't, make, they couldn't make it to work. Then I concluded, we are not the one working it. It is the God who sat down making it to work. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We are not the one working it. 
And many of the time, the thing that happened to us, we, we did not engineer it. We just sat down. And then somebody somewhere will be in one corner of the world. He's just searching. And then they will just say, look, that university in Nigeria. Let's go there. What did we do? Nothing. What has God done? Everything. Put those hands together for the almighty God. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Our case about accreditation is very humorous. Very humorous. The accreditation team will come, they will even tell us. They say that when we are coming to Covenant, we know you will not give us one dime. Yet, but we are here to come and do our work. And we will tell them to their face. We are not giving you, not, not one naira. Just come and do your work. But we have never failed accreditation before. But there are, there are, there are the university, they will even spend money. Yet, they will still lule. You know what it means to lule? They will just eat grand straight. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Why? Because God gets the work done. So if you don't know how to give him thanks, we will be serious debtor before him. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory. What are we thanking God for? We are thanking God for what we believe for. Thanking God for what you believe for. What is it that you have believed in in the word of God? When we were going to have our first child and we were, chale, we were seriously challenged. Only one scripture that I knew. In fact, that I didn't even know where it was in the, script, in the Bible. But I knew the scripture. It was inside of me. The blessings of the Lord, it make it rich. And it does not have any sorrow to it. I said, this pregnancy is the blessing of the Lord. There can be no sorrow to it. God kept it for nine months. In spite of all the challenges that we faced. At the name when we are sharing the testimony, my mother couldn't help it. He said, so you were going through all this and you never mentioned it to anyone. We had mentioned it to God. It's the hall in hall. He stood on our behalf. Shut the mouth of the lions. Cage the enemies that rose up against us and gave us the testimony in spite of the devil. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In spite of the devil, we got the testimony. I decree concerning someone under the sound of my voice today. It does not matter what the storm is. God of heaven will give you the testimony you desire. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God of heaven will give you the testimony you desire. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I say to someone under the sound of my voice, stop counting your losses. Start looking at your gains under God. Stop counting your losses. What do you believe God for? One sister came to church. And when he came, met me and said, what do you want? And he said, sir, one thing that I want, I need a life partner. Am I going to just be living my life like this? I need a husband. And then the man of God prayed for her. And the sister left. Shortly after she left, one man came in. She, he actually flew in from the U.S. And met and said, oh, daddy said, oh, how are you? So what brought you? He said, sir, one thing brought me to Nigeria. I came to look for a for wife. And once I get the woman, I will get married before going back to the U.S. and I'm taking her with me. So I said, okay. Can you define and describe the kind of woman you want? He said, ah, sir, the woman must be so, so tight. She'll be this size. She'll be this. And then she'll have this attitude. Ah, ah. Everything that man said was the description one-to-one -one of the sister that just left. So the man said, ah, I know your wife. <laughs> to cut the long story short, before that brother went back to the U.S., they had their wedding. <laughs> By the time the brother was going, among the luggages he carried away from Nigeria was the sister, you know, by his arm. Took the sister back to the U.S. Listen to me, people of God, that the sound of my voice. What is it that you desire that you think is too late? God is never late as men can't lateness. God is never slow as men can't slowness. The Lord God of heaven will still reach out to you even this time to fulfill your heart desires in the name of Jesus Christ. This month, this month alone, we have had two powerful testimonies in this university. Someone who has been waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the for the past 13 years. Suddenly God did it. The baby landed this month. 
another person has been waiting for the fruit of the womb. Now, the Lord did it. Now, let me show us what happened, what the Lord did. Three solid boys landed same time. So what do they call waiting in that one? Even those who have been running all this while, they had overtaken them. So people have been running, they only have two. This one has been waiting, he had three. Who is in front? Now, it does not matter what you desire from the Lord God of heaven. God will surprise you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Nothing is ever late with thanksgiver. If you know how to give thanks, nothing is ever late. 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 If you do not hear, remember anything, just remember that God can never be late. That where my case is concerned, God will always be on time. God will always be on time where my case is concerned. God will always be on time. 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 God has never late before. He will not start with you. So please be relaxed. Tell your neighbor, please be relaxed. Please be relaxed. Please be relaxed. Graduating class, class under the sound of my voice. As the Lord God of heaven liveth, the next convocation in Covenant University, you wear your gown. So the remaining exam for you, the Lord God of heaven will make it walk over exams for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Nothing is ever late with God. What do we thank him for? We thank him in anticipation of our supernatural restoration. Anticipation of our supernatural restoration. In other words, in case you can list that there is anything that you have lost. God is the God of restoration. He will restore you. If, if it is in your health, God of restoration will visit you. It is in your finances, God of restoration will visit you. It is psychological, God of restoration will visit you. It is academic, God of restoration will visit you. He has the capacity to restore us. Jeremiah 30 and verse 17 is what say, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thy wounds. Said the Lord. Even though they have called thee an outcast, he said, This is Zion which no man seeketh after. I have the capacity to turn all of that around in your favor. God will visit with you. Amen. He will turn your money into dancing Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He will turn your money into dancing in the name of Jesus Christ. One brother was in church. I've had cases, you know, when you say cases that sisters are believing God for husband, we feel, well, it's, okay, it's one of those things. But when brothers are the one believing God for wife, is another case. You know, the sister, because the sister cannot just go and call somebody and say, I like you, come and marry me in our climb. Though it is changing gradually, okay? You know, but brothers can simply walk up to any sister and say, I want you. And the matter will just end quickly and they will go on. Right? But this brother came to church. He said, all my mates are married and already have children. Two, three. He said, what is wrong with me? No sister has agreed to marry me. Now, to cut the long story short, he returned one particular Shiloh to share his testimony. That year, he got married. That same year, his wife took him. That same year, they had their first set of children. How many? Four babies at the same time. Four babies at the same time. I took the testimony. Four babies at the same time. So I told him, even your friend that had gone ahead, we, how many do they have? I look at him. I said, even me that have gone far ahead of you, I'd married before you, you ever thought of it. I did not have more than four. You that you just got married yesterday. Now the same year, four children. Now tell somebody, God will surprise you. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hand and just give God thanks. Give God thanks, the God of surprise. The God that is going to meet you at the point of your needs. Give him thanks this morning. Glorify his holy name. 
magnify his holy name. Lord, we thank you because we are set for the surprises you have for us as a university. Glory and honor to your holy name. In Jesus' great name, we have given thanks.